Nathan, did you know that the Dodge Durango is half the age that I am? It's an old vehicle, but you can go all the way back to 97 for the very first one. Yeah, if you want to go way back, but the um, current one is going to 14 years old. That's one four. And Nathan, it had its best model year ever last year, selling almost 70 thousand units. Can you imagine a 14 year old vehicle that just keeps growing in popularity? One of the things about the Durango, the WD, which is essentially this one that's been around forever, and it has had a refresh or two, but yeah. the reality is, is that it's had a bunch of different powertrains as well. And some of these powertrains have been monsters. So it keeps reinvigorating itself. Yeah. And we've got some rather sad news if you're a fan of the V8, because at the end of the year, it is going away. We've got a special edition kind of commemorating the V8, and in this video, we're talking about uh, what you need to know. So Nathan, let's kind of talk about the headline. So final year of the V8 Dodge Durango, what does that mean? That means that the Hemis go bye-bye. That means that the 5.7 is gone, the 6.2 supercharger is gone, the 6.4 big fat Hemi is gone. But they are doing a final hurrah for that 6.4. Yeah, the SRT 392 Elk Hemi, ah, Alchemy, it's a little bit of a pun. And what are some of the, the stats on this Alchemy? Why do we care? Well, I mean, it, they're only going to be building 1,000 models, and they only have a few different colors. So essentially, it's going to be 250 units per color. So four different colors, 250 units for those colors. And once they're gone, they're gone. December 31st is it. Now, the colors are Diamond Black, uh, Destroyer Gray, I love these names, Vapor Gray, and White Knuckle. <laughs> So yeah, that's, yeah, that's that, those are awesome names. I, uh, so, but the unfortunate thing is that once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but they are going to be building these special editions alongside the regular 392, so you can still get that as well. Yeah, and let's talk about the kind of the pricing on the El Camino. So it's going to be about a thirty-five hundred ninety-five dollar premium on the standard 392 model. Correct, Amundo. So uh, currently the MSRP for the standard 392 model is $73,715. Good luck finding one for that price. Um, so this one will come in at well over $77,000 before options. Yeah. Now let's talk a little bit about what this means, right? So Stellantis has been slowly killing off the V8s in the lineup for a while. So like Challenger and Charger mm -hmm. completely gone and the V8s went with them. Yep, that's correct. And now this is the next in the on the chopping block, it looks like. That is correct. So one of the things you should know about the Durango is they're still going to be building the Durango. It's not completely going away. Uh, but once they get rid of those V8s, essentially what you have left is the Pentastar. V6, which is obviously the volume seller, but that's a lot of fleets and stuff too. Um, anyway, so that vehicle will still be around and all of these different trim levels will still be around with the exception of the trim levels that go along with the 392 and of course the um, Hemi, supercharged Hemi. Um, and we're hearing that there will be a new Durango coming in the near future to replace this one. Well, I mean, I, I would sure hope so. And you know, we have seen some leaked documents about the future of Stellantis, right? And when the UAW thing came out, some documents came out showing right. the future product line. Um, but let, let's think about this, right? So, so Dodge killed the Challenger and Charger, which were kind of their two heavy hitters from a brand standpoint. And now they have two vehicles, the Hornet and the Durango. Yep. And if the Durango goes away, and if there's a gap between this Durango and the next one, like we're seeing with the Challenger and Charger and whatever they're going to do next, I mean, Dodge is going to be down to one product. I would hope that they'll avoid that. Um, and we maybe see other products that come in underneath that perhaps we don't know about. They're talking about electrification and some other things. Now, speaking of electrification, one of the parts of the UAW upcoming plan, and now bear in mind that these plans can be altered, so this is not written in stone. Sure. But they're saying that they want a gas version of the next um, version of the Durango, but they also want an electric version, which may be built on the STLA large platform. Once again, none of this is confirmed, but this is based on UAW documentation. Well, the Durango is kind of an interesting platform because look, if you look at like the large SUVs, you've got the Suburbans and the Tahos and the Expeditions of the world. Um, and the Durango is a little bit smaller than that, right? It's a unibody design, but then it's it's in some ways a quite a bit more practical than like a Pilot or a Highlander. So it's kind of an interesting class segment. Right, you are. In fact, it's one of the best towing vehicles in its class. If you get the right trim, you could tow well over 8,000 pounds, which absolutely trounces vehicles like you know, the Nissan Pathfinder and all of those other ones, which tow well, but nonetheless, this one is rated much higher, not to mention the fact 
that it used to give you uh, four different engine options. So this was a very flexible platform. The WD platform has been around forever, and it can trace its roots all the way back to the good old Daimler days. Mm. Um, and it's been stretched, it's been manipulated, it's been moved around, but it's, been, it's a proven platform. However, on top of everything else, if you look at IHS scores and NHTSA scores, they're not the worst, but they're not the best. Yeah, right. Well, and that, that's an important thing when you're considering a three-row SUV. Now, so with with the death, death of the V8, which has been pretty sudden, right? The Ram is also losing the V8 right. in the new, um, the new uh, 25 model year trucks. Is this a problem for Dodge? So a lot of the, the full-size products, like in the Wagoneer, like in the Ram, are being replaced with the Hurricane inline six. Do you think a Dodge buyer in a Durango like price point in class is going to really want a V8 or do you think a V6 is going to be enough to entice that buyer? Well, I would hope that the buyer might look at the numbers and say, mm, this hurricane, which might come, we still have no confirmation on the hurricane being in the next Durango or anything, but right. logic dictates that it may. Um, I would be like, oh, wow, well, I'm getting more horsepower and more torque and most likely much better economy and a greener engine out of this as opposed to the V8 that's in there. So that's the positive. The negative is... Look, that V8 has a character to itself, it has a sound, and a lot of people are going to be disappointed when they don't have that sound with their next RT version of whatever they're going to be buying with the Durango. Mm. That's a good point, yeah. Mm -hmm. And especially when you look at, like, the Durango, the fact that you could get the 710 horsepower Hellcat and still be able to haul your boat, I mean, Dodge calls it the most powerful SUV ever, which, you know, you could go back and forth on, on, on semantics on that, but 710 horsepower is a ton of power in a seven-seater or six-seater SUV. Even even the its baby brother, I guess you could say, the, the, the 392, you know, I mean, if you're looking at uh, the 6.4 versus the 6.2, they're still both stupid powerful and really, really fast, and they get remarkably bad gas mileage. So if you're hauling around your family, good luck getting over, say, 11 miles per gallon combined, but, but... They're fun, they're fast, and they have a ton of character. Yeah, and look, Nathan, um, I mean, I'm sad to see the V8 go away. I'm really curious to see, you know, they didn't announce the death of the Durango at the end of the year in this current body style either. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe they're going to keep with the 3.6, yep. which, you know, you could argue is more of a fleet engine in some ways than a typical consumer engine. It's been around for over 12 years now. So look, maybe keep with the 3.6, and um, uh, just keep it trucking along as its current form. Because if I was Dodge, I'd be looking at the sales numbers and be like, well, gee, we're up 24% on a 13-year-old vehicle, 14-year-old vehicle. Why are, we, why are we killing it? Yeah, I think there's a final point to that, which is it was announced that those engines would be you know, phased out. And I have a feeling that a lot of these sales are because the people are like, oh, this is our last chance. Let's go grab them it now. It could be, yeah. But still, this has been... One of the winners, the unsung heroes, really, for Dodge in terms of sales over the years. Do you know how many Durangos have been sold altogether since 97? Scott. Over 2 million. Wow. I mean, that is a pretty significant number when you're considering that this vehicle is neither fish nor fowl. It doesn't really sit in either, you know, the, the uh, suburban territory or, you know, the, once again, the Pathfinder territory. It's sort of in the middle of those. And yet it has sold very well. And it's a pretty strong vehicle, and it ha makes a good case for itself considering how flexible the platform is. But bottom line, this vehicle will eventually be phased out. But for now, it's going to keep going just without the V8s. Yeah. So there you guys have it. Um, and to your point, Nathan, right, like even Stellantis themselves, in the meantime, this vehicle has been launched. They've launched other three rows, Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer, Grand Cherokee L is targeted right at like the typical Durango buyer in a lot of ways. And yet this guy just keeps selling. So we'd love to hear your feedback, folks. If you want to get the Alchemy, um, you got to go through, there's like the Dodge Horsepower Locator website, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but Nathan, with the death of the Durango, with the death of the V8 and the Rams and the Wagoneer, and of course, Charger Challenger. There's only one left, and I saw rumblings on the forum recently that it might be going away as well, and that's the Wrangler 392. Yeah, I'm not surprised that that's going to be going away soon. I think that one of the things you guys have to keep in mind is that this is something that they've been announcing for a long time. I mean, this, this is not surprising us, right? I mean, bottom line, Stellantis is getting rid of their big V8s. So They're going with smaller displacement engines that should be more efficient. And yeah, I think at the end of this, 
All you're going to see that's remaining is that 392 in the Wrangler, and I'm pretty sure that thing's not going to last another year, but that's my own guess. Yeah, so nothing official from Jeep on what's going on with that, just some rumblings on the floor from mm-hmm. dealer stuff, but we'll update you if we get word from Jeep as exactly what's going on with that Wrangler. But in the meantime, folks, buy your V8 Durango's while you can, and this has been Tommy. And Nathan. And we'll see you on another episode over at alltfl.com. Thanks for watching. Ciao.